Streamlabs changed their software on me. So, this is all new. <laughs> I'm glad I'm doing pre-shows. Show starts here pretty soon. It won't get rid of... Oh, wait. I think I can get rid of the chat that way. Lovely. Okay. I'm going to have to check a few things. Everything is totally different for me. By the way, pretty soon... I don't... You can't see it very well, but there's a spider web behind me. But pretty soon, we're going to be starting our show. Let's see if I can adjust it so it's not so cruddy. Yeah, this way a little bit. Uh, but I want to check my chat. That looks funky. I had this major software update, and of course my show starts in 10 minutes, and I just now updated the software. I haven't had a chance to check anything, and it's totally different. My screen doesn't look anything like normal, so hopefully I can get through tonight's show without uh, too much drama. Uh, if my employee is listening, I wish he would take that squeaker toy away from Harry Potter. <laughs> I don't know if he's listening or not. All right, let me get here on Facebook. I've had all kinds of changes to my show recently. I guess we're going to hear the squeaker toy during my show. <laughs> it's going to be a fun show tonight, guys. Uh, I've done all kinds of kind of cool graphics. Let me angle that down a little bit. I've done some really cool graphics for the show tonight. We're going to talk about a bunch of different stuff. Hold on. Let me see if I'm here. Oh, it looks like I'm live. I've been live for a couple seconds, so there's a big delay. This is new software, guys. Starting soon. Soon. Let's see if it works. My chat looks funky. That is not the chat that we're supposed to have. That's why we do pre-show. Let me see if I can do it on my phone. They reset my chat. That looks awful. So let's fix it. That's why I do pre-show, guys. This is going to be a fun show tonight. If you're watching, I'm sorry for the little technical stuff, but uh, I always start the show a little early. It's pre-show. And then when we get into it, it should go pretty smoothly. Uh, let's go here. I'm going to see if I can change that chat back to the way I had it before. Log in. I see people are popping in, but I, I can't really read anything yet. They really messed with the the way this thing works. The editor and the um, come on, the editor and the um, live are together, and it's very confusing. All right, so let's go to my chat. Let's fix that chat real quick. Open in browser and see what it looks like. Because that's not what it's supposed to look like. Looks totally funky. Okay, that didn't do what I wanted. All right, so let's go here. It's been so long since I've looked at this. <laughs> Seriously, guys, it, it's been a very, very long time since I've looked at this. Uh, I'm not sure I'm going to be able to fix this. Chat. Let me see, maybe settings for chat. Settings. Sorry about this, guys. I am so glad, though, that I came on early. No, that's not it either. Because that, that chat is going to look terrible on my show. Like I said, I had a whole new software update. You know what? Let, let's do something else before I start going crazy on this thing. Uh, let me uh, refresh the catch and see if it changes it back. No, it's not going to. See, those are not my chat settings. Ah, there we go. Hold on. Bam. Got it fixed. Yay! <laughs> it's always a little chaotic. Okay, so let me close that out. This is very weird, guys. I hope I do well in my show tonight. This is a really good show, and I hate to have it so funky. It looks like it allows me to adjust things live without switching between windows, which it didn't used to be able to do. I'll tell you flat out. Ooh, this looks terrible. I'll tell you right out. Um, that's actually an awesome thing, because that means, see, before I had to make all my backdrops, and I couldn't change anything. Not without switching over to an editor and then going in and doing a bunch of stuff and then going back. 
if I am analyzing what I am seeing in front of me correctly, we're just about ready to start and then it's going to get fun. If I'm analyzing what I'm seeing correctly, it looks like I would be able to change things very easily without switching windows. Like, for example, you see the little uh, shop logo thing I have going on up there. Um, since we're live and I don't know what I'm doing, I'm not going to mess with it. <laughs> but technically, you don't see any colored lines. Let me make sure you don't see any editing lines on the screen. No, you do not. Hold on. Still looks funky on Facebook. Let me refresh Facebook. It probably hasn't caught up with us yet. No, it still looks funky on Facebook. It hasn't changed over. There it goes. It just changed. Okay, now you guys are probably freaking out what I'm talking about because there's a big delay between what I'm seeing and what's going out. But you'll notice that the chat changed just a second ago from a hideous thing that you can see through to something that's designed for my show. So we're just about ready. It's five minutes to showtime. I believe the moderator's here. Uh, let me check. She, she sent me a message. Uh, she goes, I'm here on time and live. Okay, great. She's going to be over there on YouTube. I'm going to be over there on Facebook. Now, we are streaming to multi-networks, but I'm going to tell you guys, before we start the show, there's been a little change. You guys are used to seeing me on my daily vlog. I was using Restream for that, but just like you saw that chat window I had some issues with, I'm having a lot of problems mobile with Restream. Not them, but the crappy service that I get in the country. So Facebook, even though it's not as nice, uh, it does allow me to do... Uh, my show, my daily vlog, and upload it to Ecom Tips podcast very easily. I just push a few buttons instead of having to download and then extract and then upload. So, and I actually have way more followers on Facebook. I've got like 5,000 some odd followers on Facebook and on YouTube. By the way, I didn't change my screen number. You'll see that in the show in just a minute. We're just about ready to start. But on YouTube, I've got like 600 followers. So, and not many of those followers actually watch on YouTube my daily vlog. A lot of them watch my shows, but not too many watch my daily vlog. So since it's Facebook where it's all primarily, I just got a message. Say, so, oh, trick or treat. Yeah, since it's Facebook that primarily my daily vlog gets all of its traffic, why not leave the streaming on Facebook? And then... I will send it to YouTube, and if they want to watch a replay, that's great. And I will send it to my Ecom Talks podcast. By the way, this show that we are starting in less than a minute is also going to be on Ecom Tips podcast. I did make a web page and a bunch of stuff to go along with this show. It's going to we're going to cover a lot of stuff. We're going to cover we're going to do a little bit of recipe stuff. We're going to talk about blogging about Halloween. We're going to talk about social media marketing of it. We're obviously going to talk about costumes because my business sells costumes. Uh, and then we have an open question and answer where you're welcome to talk about anything. Well, you know what? Let's start this countdown and let's get this ball rolling. Now, this is a silent countdown for those listening on the podcast. So if you hear a little blank space, don't freak out. It's supposed to be quiet. And I'll see you in just a moment. Well, hello, everybody. And I think all the settings are working and everything all right. I had a major uh, software change just before the show. Now, this is a pretty boring scene. This is what you'll see every beginning of the show. This is where I talk about myself in the show and what's going to happen. This is the helpful tip show. You can ask a question. You'll need to go to keywebco.com to look up most of the things I'm talking about. You'll find them in the menu. We have our helpful tip show. We have the Dragon Deals live slot uh, that I will talk about real briefly at the end of the show. Uh, I have free apps available. You can find those again at keywebco.com. You really want to get my free apps, guys. They'll teach you everything you need to know. Uh, 
I have blogs. I have three blog sites. So you will need to check all three sites if you are looking up information or you're looking for a recipe or anything like that. Uh, I have an affiliate program that you are more than welcome to join. You don't have to be a member of any special club and you can make money and it doesn't cost you anything. Ecom Tips is what pays for everything. That is my podcast. It's really important that you listen to my podcast and subscribe if you would. All right. And I do websites. Obviously, that's where I make my money. So I do free and paid websites. Free, I'll teach you how to do it. Paid, I don't charge too much. Helpful Tips has a Facebook group, which you should join. It's pretty awesome. And then there's a private chat, but we'll talk about that in the show later. We also have the Souls Network group. Now, I've been running that for years. It has a small number of members, but they're all very active and they do get their stuff sold. Recipes for You app. Love that app. I made it to go with the recipes for you group. That's my little intro. I do that every time. Now we are into the Halloween theme. We are in the Halloween show. Now I'm going to leave this chat here for just a moment while I collect my thoughts and I decide which way we're going to go next. Now the next major topic we're going to talk about is costumes. So I'm going to sit here a while. Now as people come in, and hopefully we have quite a few, I know there's a lot that are going to watch the replay. Um, I know there's quite a few that are going to watch the replay. But while we're sitting here, I'm going to go over here to Facebook, and I'm going to type in a link for you guys that I really want you to check out, because it goes with this show. Um, it is a page I made at KeyWebCo. Let me type this in. KeyWebCo.com slash p-a-g-e-s that's pages and just halloween yeah. Yeah. Uh, autocorrect sorry there we go oh darn it it's capital i don't think it really matters but i'm going to correct it anyway all right, now that link will pop up over there on Facebook for you guys. Now that should be an HTTPS, so the little frowny face doesn't need to be there. That is a secure web page on my site. Um, I, that can be just taken off the screen, or you can type that in over there on YouTube if you'd like. Now that page, we're going to open it up. Yes, we are. But I can't open it up for my chat. I have to go over here and type it in manually myself. Well, no, I can just go to QWeb code. Well, no, I better type it in. Give me just a second. Oh, it just took me to QWeb code. Give me a second. There might be some signal issues. I don't know if you can see that, but I'm having some issues with AT&T, but it just popped up. So uh, I don't know if the page is in my navigation yet. I just created it. You know what? I'm going to have to type this out. Give me just a second. Uh, pay, oops. I would have had this more prepared, but like I said, I just had a major software update before the show. And we don't have too many people in yet. So kind of, uh, here we go. There it came up. All right. Now the page is opened up here on my device so I can talk you through it. Otherwise, it's memory and as I am very old my memory is not as good as normal but we're going to talk a lot about Halloween stuff in the show but the page you should really go peek at it's everything for Halloween there are some video samples of costumes there's a little information in here about Halloween what to wear costumes and some pictures I'm scrolling down to something in particular just to make sure I'm telling you everything correctly yes okay good deal uh, one of the reasons I'm having you look at this page is I did say later in the show, we're going to talk about recipes. Uh, the recipes that we're going to talk about aren't even my recipes. They are my friend Linda's recipes app. Uh, camera is definitely changed for me here. This is very difficult for me. They really did change my software. <laughs> But that is uh, myhoneysplace.com. You can go there directly or you can get it from my page that is embedded. You just click the link. There's also some videos and uh, a few embeds. There's also my costumes are available for you to look at. And uh, so you can refer to that page. The very bottom, let me see if I can get that to show. The very bottom, that little embed there, 
is my article about costumes and Halloween, and it has a lot more information in it. So I wanted to give you guys that reference of what we're going to be talking about in the show further on. All right, now let's get this business stuff. You can tell I'm zipping along. I want to get the business stuff out of the way. My business stuff is what I consider me selling something, but I'm not really selling. I'm just going to talk about costumes. Yet, I do sell costumes, so let's get that part where my business is kind of involved with it out, and then we can get on to the fun, fun, fun stuff, even though I do have awesome costumes. So here we go. All right. I am hoping all of this is working. <laughs> they really messed with my world when they changed my software. Okay, this is just a little slide through of some costumes. So we're going to talk about costumes. Now I'm not going to try to sell you costumes at my store. You can, of course, find those at keywebco.com. But what we're going to discuss is as you see these costumes roll around. Now think about that. Now that right there, that costume right there is extremely expensive and it is sold out. I have another model of the same uh, but that particular model is sold out. As you can see, these costumes coming through here are really high-end costumes. That's what I carry. Now, if you are just taking your kids around the block, yeah, you can go to my store and buy an awesome costume. Hopefully, you have children that are younger that will wear it again because these things last forever. Now, I told you I'm not selling you costumes here, but I want you to pay attention to what you're buying when you go to places like Family Dollar and Walmart and you get those little vinyl plasticky costumes, the reason I'm mentioning that is Key Webco on eBay for years sold those costumes. And I had problem after problem after problem. They just don't last and they're just very poorly made. So I did the last year I was on eBay because I just closed eBay. The last year, the year before that, in other words, not this year, but the year before, I went to Cargo Largo, where I like to source, and I bought the higher end of the low end costumes, and I, it was like day and night. I had no returns at all, none, not a single one. I only had one costume that had a buckle missing on one of the belts, and I sold you know, hundreds and that's just because I went with a little higher quality costume. So I'm telling you, if you are an e-commerce seller, if you're going to sell the inexpensive cheap costumes, you need to make sure that you have backups of the one you send out, realizing that that's not going to do any good if they order very, very close to Halloween. So I'm, I'm, I'm discouraging you in a roundabout way from carrying the low-end costumes. Let them buy that on eBay from China, where eBay is putting that as the promoted listing, where your theater costume does not get promoted, because not too many people spend as much money. You have to think about the platforms and where you are selling your costumes. For example, I did mention that I was going to talk about a lot of stuff tonight. One of the things that I am doing and it's probably going to be too late for much this year. But I am importing or exporting to Prairie Gray. Now, I don't use eBay. I don't use eBay at all. But I like Prairie Gray because it is a community-based platform. That means that when my listing goes up, it gets pushed to Google as my listing. Not put in a product catalog where no one sees it. OK, that's the difference. When eBay did not put their stuff in a product catalog, I made 150 sales a day. Now that everything's in the product catalog, well, at least be before I sh turned off my eBay, it went to like nothing from search. I was making 20 to 30 sales a day average. I did the math, but all but five or six were coming from me, my funneling into eBay nothing on eBay search. And I was having about, oh, five or six thefts a day. Guess where they came from? eBay search results. So eh, not all of them, but I decided that's not worth my time. So I, I bring this up because if you are going to carry those low cost costumes and you're going to list them on eBay, mm, you're going to have problems and you're probably not going to come up in search at all anyway. You list high-end costumes, you're going to have a very hard time coming up in search 
but you're not going to have any problems. So that is my recommendation for costumes. Now, my true recommendation for costumes is if you need a costume, don't buy one from anyone else. Go to keywebco.com, get yourself a few theater level costumes and use them year after year or give them to different kids or resell them. So that's my true advice. Now, you know, I had to plug that in because I do have to make money somehow. All right. So I did my little costume spiel. I told you guys I was going to do that. Now we are over into questions and answers. Now we're going to sit here. If I do not see anyone asking questions, we are going to zip right through this Halloween show because most people are watching just to see the graphics I stuck in. Of course, with the, the chat over the little pumpkin face, it's not quite as impressive as I thought it would be. Actually, that's really loud. So I'm kind of glad the chat's covering it. All right. Now, if you have any questions, anybody in here, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. It can be a question about Halloween. It can be about recipes, about platforms. It can be about Prairie Grant. Don't know too terribly much about it. Uh, I know I know all the essentials, but I haven't been really working on it yet. Uh, I did before, and I, so I know the basics, but the nuances of the current data, I do not know yet. I have to study that up. But I am going to have 34,000 listings over there. And probably about 4,000 or 5,000 of those are costumes. But I don't think it's going to do much good for this year. We're getting close to the wire. Oh, that's the other thing I didn't mention in the costume thing before. But I'll go ahead and mention it while I'm waiting for a question. And hopefully I'll get one. When it comes, uh, I'll read that in just a second. The, uh, the, the last thing I was going to mention about what I was talking about before. When it comes to those costume things, the thing I forgot to mention, your shipping speed is a priority. Is a priority. I do not recommend talking about your shipping speed really in your description unless it's something that's time dated. Christmas presents, costumes, costumes being majorly important. If your shipping takes 15 days, you need to write it in great big bold letters that your shipping takes 15 days. If your shipping takes 5 to 10, write that. If your shipping takes a week, write that in your listing, which is not something that I recommend normally but for costumes it matters otherwise you'll be answering emails all day and night long how long is it going to take to get the costume because people will not order halloween stuff until the last minute christmas and stuff they tend to order a little bit early halloween it's impulse so we're going to talk about that too all right so when it comes to products such as costumes how do you determine the quality of the item that you choose to sell very, very good question. The quality of the costume is normally pretty obvious by its packaging. Now, I know that doesn't make sense to most people, but it's true. If you see 10 costumes lined up in a row of all different types, and they're all in an identical plastic envelope with a little cardboard insert like you do at Walmart and Kmart and all the most, most stores. And you look down the aisle and they look all the same except the costumes in each one is different and the cardboard insert's different. Chances are those are crap. <laughs> Chances are those are not very good costumes. Now, not always. You have to check. If they are by Ruby. Now, I don't carry those. But if they are by Ruby, I believe that's in New York where that's located. Even their low-end costumes tend to be okay, and they tend not to have things missing. Any other brand in the low-end, you're going to have things missing, and it's going to have vinyl and plastic. The other way you check for the quality of the costume is look at what it is made out of. Now, a lot of them do have uh, plastic and, and uh, polyester and stuff in them, even the high-end ones. But... If you look at it and you can see it's flimsy and the packaging isn't very thick anyway, um, and it's just plastic all over the place, chances are it is a junky costume. Is, is the concept the same for any product, not just costumes, example, shoes and habits and et cetera? No, it is not. Uh, for example, if you are looking for brand name shoes, and you look down the aisle and all the boxes are the same and they all have the, the little mark and they should have, sometimes they normally have those little stickers, kind of like the sports stuff. It's like a little rainbowy, silvery plastic thing on them. Uh, 
that's a good sign. That means that all of those are in name brand boxes. Okay. That's a good sign. If you go into a design shop and you go looking down and they, now the size of the box may be different, but you look down and some of the labels are a little bit crooked. Some of the label, the box color is more manila instead of white. Or if it's a brown box, it's a more chocolate brown instead of the actual color of the box. Then on shoes, you better check those shoes carefully because that chances are you've got some frauds sitting in there. So no, it's not the same on all products, but in costumes in particular, the packaging definitely reflects the value of the costume. Also, the materials it's made out of. When you look at a costume, Look at the stitching. Does it look like it's clear fishing line kind of stitching? Came from China, it's scrap. Probably sewn into plastic. So you've got to really look at how they're put together. The biggest way to tell though, packaging is the first sign. The second sign is the materials that it's made out of. Now when you look at the costume, you can tell from the feel. If there's a lot of vinyl-y plastic, unless it's a heavy vinyl, get rid of it. If it's plastic on it, you know, like the plastic capes, all those cheap costumes have plastic capes. If your costume that you're looking at and you open it up and it has a plastic cape, but the plastic feels more like a, it feels more like a shipping bag, a polymer plastic, a higher grade plastic, you know, that might be an okay costume to carry. But if you touch it and it feels like the same plastic that you just pulled off in saran wrap, chances are that costume is not going to be something that you want to buy and sell yourself. Now, that said, there's always exceptions to the rule. If you have a bundle of inexpensive costumes, you can move those, telling even that they are inexpensive. Do you have a large family? Are you having a major party and everyone's going to come? Some people might not have costumes. Buy our lot with Vampira, Dracula, Frankenstein. Pick like five or six common characters. Take those cheap costumes that you probably bought in clearance after Halloween for a dollar, two dollars a piece that were ten. And bundle those up together. And go ahead and I wouldn't put cheap, but you can put inexpensive uh, volume lot box of uh, imported from China costumes. Something to indicate that these are not going to last except past the party. You kill two birds with one stone. You make a lot listing sale. You make less per item, but you're going to sell, get rid of a lot of them instead of have them sitting in your store for years and years and years. And the buyer is going to expect exactly what they get. When they get the package of costumes and they open it all out and one of the little plastic belts, uh, the let's say one of the, the, the punch hole buttons that they, uh, punch holes that they put for the buckle to connect is already got a little tear in it because some kid tried it on. They don't care. They're expecting to see that quality of product because if you buy them at walmart to resell them you're going to find the belt buckle that has a little plastic tear because someone wore it and brought it back the day after uh, halloween you don't ever buy this stuff before season you know you buy it in clearance so now if you're sourcing before season and you're ordering wholesale from a manufacturer that is a totally different scenario if you are ordering wholesale from the manufacturer then that changes what's going on. You are getting the costume directly from China that may still have defects, but you're not getting something that's been worn and returned. I'm telling you flat out, if you are buying in clearance, half of the things you are buying have been worn and returned, especially in Halloween costumes, because people take advantage of that right and left. So be warned about that. That's the other thing though. If you are carrying theater level costumes, you wear them year after year, or you give them to the next youngest kid, or you give them to another family and you swap them. You don't have uh, the return to the store. The theater level costumes that you buy at the store, and you really can't find too many, but you will. If you go into Walmart, you can find a good costume there. Very few, but you can find a few. I have 11,000 guys. So, But you can find some costumes that are good there. 
those might get returned, but that's just like clothing. If the tag is still on it, you can pretty much resell those because they're not going to have damages from them wearing them the one night and bringing them back. Now, of course, if you know someone where it's a return, you can identify that in when you buy it, then you need to be selling it as a used item, not a new item. But like I said, half the time, you're not going to know if it was a return or not. All right, I switched over here to the next helpful tips live chat window. If you have any further questions, feel free to ask them. I'll answer questions at any time. Now we're going to talk a little bit about recipes. Oh, yes, we are. We're going to talk a little bit about recipes. To do that, you need to go to that link that I gave you before. And since it's not, oh, wait a minute, it's still visible on the screen. You can see it right under Perfect Finds link there. That keywebco.com page slash pages slash Halloween. Go there and check out our page. And we are going to scroll to we see if I can find it. I just created this. This page will have more in it. And this show will be embedded in this page after we are done tonight. We're going to scroll down to you see the My Honey's Place. It, the image you're seeing is probably 10 best holiday, Halloween desserts. Now, this is a search in her store, her website, not her store, it's just a website, uh, for Halloween. So we're going to click read this on myhoneysplace.com. In other words, I'm taking you off my sites. So we're going to someone else's business here. And I'm going to just scroll through and read some of these fan freaking tastic recipes that Linda has in here. Now, Linda is Recipes For You group on Facebook. I added the Recipes For You app. That's me. But its content is from Linda and Jody and myself and a few other people that share at the Recipes For You group, which you really should join. I've been a member of that before I was in e-commerce. Okay, guys, I mean, we're talking forever and you are not going to find a better resource of recipes than Linda's sites, basically. All right. So we're going to go through and we're going to read some of these recipes. If you have questions about any of the recipes like, hey, that sounds good. What's in it? Feel free to ask. Of course, I might not see it. So you'll need to tell me the name of the recipe and I'll go back. Remember, there's always a delay. 20 spooky Halloween recipes. Fun Halloween recipes, 10 best Halloween desserts, do-it-yourself Halloween fun, do-it-yourself Halloween decor, more recipes for Halloween. And there are pages of this, guys. <laughs> I'm telling you, Linda has been doing this a very long time. Great little, you know, graphics. Let's open up one of Linda's. I'm surprised she's not in here because I think she knows I'm doing this tonight. But, you know, she's... Uh, uh, got uh, people she has to care for. We're going to open up recipes for Halloween. Now, this is not one of her new ones. I went back to see if I can find something old that no one has seen yet, because I'm sure she's been sharing these new ones around. All right. Oh, there's all kinds of goodies in here. Let's take a peek. Okay. Well, Halloween recipes for the gobbling up of your for your party guests. Click on the pictures to get recipes. Linda really does a great job with her sites. So all you have to do to get these recipes from her, the actual recipe. So you see a nice image. You click on the image. And poof, it takes you. Oh, well, I'll have to scroll down. Give me a minute. It's a little slow. We have bad signal right now. But it takes you. Hold on. takes you. Uh, let me get rid of there and pop up. It takes you to the site where the arrest to be originated. I heard my employee yell something awful back there. I don't know what the heck that was. But there's tons more in here. And this is... Oh, sorry, guys. Oh, it's not scrolling. And this is just one... And it has all the directions how to do it in the recipe. And this is just one of the recipes in her site. And I told you there are pages of them, guys. Pages. And look at all the comments and stuff. I'm telling you guys, this is a great site to go to. So, 
uh, you can find that at on my Halloween page. So we have covered a few recipes. I had, now you guys are going to laugh. If you know me, you've seen my dogs in the car. Um, I had made cupcakes, just a dozen, not very many. And I had made two dozen cookies. Decorated them with icing that I got for free at Leon's. If you watch me on my daily show, you'll know what I'm talking about there. They were cute. Nothing super spectacular. I set, You can see me granted. You know what's coming, don't you? I set them here where I am sitting on my chair. Dogs weren't in the house. I go to the bathroom to go to the bathroom. My show's starting in 45 minutes. I come out of the bathroom five minutes later. Both dogs, they weren't in the house. They'd only been in the house for like a second. My employee had come in. I heard him come in. Didn't hear the dogs, but I heard him come in. I was still in the bathroom. I said, hey, I'm on my way out. By the time he got from the front door to the chair, and the time I got from my back, my bathroom's way far from here, but by the time I got from the bathroom over here, the dogs are covered with icing. Not one cupcake left, and the cookies just crumbled and smashed everywhere. So I, the baking that I did, <laughs> that I was going to show everybody tonight, the dogs got. I thought you guys would get a kick out of that. I'm laughing about it. I I did eat a few cupcakes and cookies before they got it, so at least someone got some. My employee didn't get any. He was mad because I, I really, I was going to show the recipe. I guess I could show the recipe. This is not a good recipe. This isn't like a big fancy recipe. And I do do recipes. This is just a, a domestic recipe. Normal cake mix. Normal cake mix. Nothing fancy there. Chocolate. This is for the cupcakes. Normal cake mix. Chocolate. Then you go by Rolos. You know what Rolos are? They're the little candies that are chocolate. And they've got the like caramely things inside. And I put Rolos in the bottom of each a one, and then I put the cupcake mix in, and then I put a Rolo on top, um, and then I bake. Nothing fancy with the cake. Simple cupcakes with two Rolos stuck in each one. It really makes them taste good. So try that. Then the top, all I did was three colors. I made a, uh, I had, uh, I actually used three colors to make black icing. I did not have black icing. So you buy black icing. But you can make black icing. So I made my black icing. And I I made, uh, I took a, a half of a marshmallow. I had the jumbo. If you have the small one, just use a single one. But I had a jumbo. So I cut it in half. And I put the marshmallow on top of the cupcake. Then all I did was take the icing and cover the marshmallow. But you do have to smear it onto the cupcake a little bit so the, the thing doesn't fall off. <laughs> then all I did was take black licorice, you know, the Twizzler stuff. I think it was Twizzlers. No, it was licorice. It was licorice. And I just cut it in little things that look like legs. And you stick it into the little marshmallow. And you can put little eyes. I I used uh, sprinkles to make little eyes, but you don't even have to do that. And if you're really nice, which I did, this is what took me all the time. You take a little red icing, and even though it's on the top, this is a suggestive spider, you put an hourglass in red. You know, the little hourglass shape like a, uh, a black widow would have. And that was my cupcakes. But the dogs ate them. <laughs> so, no, yeah, 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 the dogs got the cupcakes. Now, guys, I also, my employee could, because of the dog drama today, uh... He, and some other drama, he did not get the, we were going to put them in their Halloween costumes, take pictures for this show. And then it, we started to do it. And I looked at him. I said, you know what? Let's save that for the 31st. And I'm going to announce something here. We're, we're almost done. We've got a few more things to go through. I announced some things here. Uh, while I get spammed. Hold on. Let me get rid of the spam real quick. All right. So I got to get it. I got to get rid of that. Uh, it's because I use MP3 Hub to to rip the sound off of my YouTubes to make podcasts. That's why I get the spam because you have to have an ad blocker turned off, and they always give you a little window. They want you to download some app. You don't download the app, but then after you do it, you get these little notifications. Would you like this app? 
And if you block it, then you can't download anything. So that's why I got it. All right. So the dog's got my cookies. <laughs> I'm laughing, but I was actually a little perturbed. But we didn't get them all dressed up. But we are going to do that on the 31st. Now, let me explain. On the 31st, that is the Halloween, I am going to be on this channel. And I'm going to be drinking Halloween cocktails. You're not going to see me actually drinking online, obviously. But I'm going to be having cocktails. And I'm going to be eating candy. I'm going to go put a hat on. <laughs> I think I have a hat that claps or something. I don't know. I've got a few costumes. I'm going to put something on. So I will have some sort of costume on. And I'm going to go over. And I'm going to trick or treat at my mom's house. And I'm going to sneak in there. I'm going to take a great big handful of candy. <laughs> and I'm going to bring it home. And during the show, my employee and I and the dogs are all going to eat the candy that we boosted from my mom's house on Halloween. Actually, I'm just going to ask her for some candy. <laughs> but uh, the premise of the show is I've stolen the candy from my mom and I'm coming over here and I'm going to show everyone that I've eaten my mom's candy on Halloween <laughs> at 52 years old after trick-or-treating. That's the premise of the 31st. I don't have kids, so we're going to dress up the dogs. I'm going to do it all, not live. I'm going to record it all on video. And it's going to be in my Halloween show. And it's not really a formal show. I'm just going to come on here. It's going to be on the computer. It's not going to be on my phone. And I'm going to be messing around with the dogs and having cocktails and eating candy on Halloween while everyone's out and about. And it's going to be streaming all over the place. So if you guys are out trick-or-treating and you're waiting down at the end of the block for your kids, you can watch all the craziness going on at keywebco.com. Also, we just put this little... Uh, uh, spider web thing up but we have a fantastic backdrop it just arrived today and i'm looking at it and it is it's really nice it's lace with a orange background and spiders it's like this but like real nice it's not open it's actually going to be a whole curtain behind me and i'm going to have a little costume so i'm this is my announcement of what i'm actually going to do on the 31st. By the way, I popped over to this window so you can add your business link or chat. If you are selling Halloween products, feel free to drop those in here. Now, I am not going to put the link for my Halloween costumes in here because obviously, if you go to keywebgo.com, the costumes are there. But if you happen to be an affiliate and you want to put my Halloween costumes in here, you can. Or if you're selling something Halloween yourself in another business of your own, this is the one show that I will allow you to put a single item for sale in the comments. If you have a Halloween item, you are, don't have to put your whole store. You can actually try to sell your Halloween item in comments in this show. And that's on Facebook, YouTube, or any of the other nine sites I am streaming on. This is the only time you have permission to put an item for sale in comments. You always have permission to put your full store, to put your YouTube channel, to put your Twitter channel, anything that you want someone to go look at and follow and share, because that's what I do. For example, Perfect Finds for You just put her strikingly website. Now, I share it all the time, but since she put it in the show, I'm going to go over there and sit on her site for a good minute or two, which is good for her Google algorithm. Then I'm going to share it somewhere to Twitter or Pinterest or Facebook somewhere because she took the time to put her stuff in my store because I uh, in my comments because I asked for it and I am like that all the time all my other shows you can put the sh you can always put your links to your primary pages but you can't put individual items if you have anything Halloween related it can be a coffee cup that says boo okay anything Halloween related you are welcome to put it in this either live or or replay of this show. You may actually want to consider doing that because this is going every place. It's getting put in my feeds and my data output. So that gets picked up by people I don't even know on all the different networks. If you use Buffer, if you use Postcron, if you use any feed software that uses RSS, there's a very high probability that most of that content that you're touching came through my hands at one time or another. I've been doing this a very long time. 
We're not going to talk about that in detail today because we're talking about Halloween. So we are going to go to what I call my live scene. This used to be at the very beginning of my show. I took the little question marks out of the background and now it's at the end of my show. And I'm waiting to see if it actually works because I just updated my software. That number is incorrect. If Perfect Finds for You would do me a solid and tell me how many subscriptions I have at this time. I believe I have popped 600. I have been listening to YouTubes all week long. I never was a big YouTube watcher. I would make my videos for my ads there and that was just about it. That's all I ever really used YouTube for. Now I'm actually, and you know, I watch Jay Craft Show and a few other shows, but very few. Now I've been watching every show under the planet and subscribing to all these channels. You subscribe to someone else's channel. Awesome. I popped 600. I knew I was close. Uh, you subscribe to someone else's channel and they tend to subscribe back. That's okay. I much rather get my subscribers from people that watch my show and go, hey, this is wonderful. I'd love to see it all the time. But as I have done my analysis, 90% of the subscribers that most people get are just people that have subscribed because you've subscribed. So I'm doing that as well. I have to pop a thousand subscribers. I am very close to my goal. Very close to my goal. 600 is very good. I started with 40. Perfect Finds probably has a better memory than I do on time because everything is the same to me. Uh, but I believe I've been doing this almost a year. Not the full show, but using YouTube to send Facebook to for a while. And then I started transmitting a show, but I think the show has only been about eight months, seven months. But for a year, I've kind of been messing with YouTube. So from 40 to 613, and by the way, not paying to get subscribers, uh, that's okay. That, I'm, I'm actually happy. I was really upset when I first started trying to get subscribers because I just wasn't getting them. And then I had to gripe a bunch of people out, <laughs> which is totally against my character, and a couple hundred subscribed. People that I know on Facebook that I've done thousands of things for, finally I had to guilt them into subscribing, which really breaks my heart. That's the the kind of person I am, but I have to hit that thousand mark. So if you know anyone who hasn't subscribed to my channel and you can check to see who my subscribers are, you might want to say, hey, don't those graphics on your page, didn't Roger give you those graphics? July-ish, yeah, that's what I thought. Uh, didn't Roger give you those graphics? I've actually had two people write me and say, yeah, I went to three pages that I know you did the graphics for and I checked and they weren't a subscriber. So I wrote him and said, hey, Roger asked you to subscribe months ago and why haven't you subscribed to his channel? So I got other messages from the people that got griped out. You know, someone's trying to get you subscribers. <laughs> and I said, oh, really? I didn't even know that they were doing it. And then I found out, I was like, oh, well, that's okay. <laughs> I didn't say anything about it. <laughs> By the way, it's not my moderator perfect fights for you, just in case you're wondering. It's somebody, I don't even think anyone here really knows. It's a, a person that is a friend of mine from years back. Um, I don't want to drop their name, um, but everyone will know who they are. How can I do it without being too tacky? They used to be really big in eBay. And then they don't work on eBay anymore, but not because they were fired, because they worked there for so long. That's good enough. You will not have a hard time figuring out who that is if you know the people I know. All right, so let's move on, because otherwise I'm going to spill who that is, and I don't want to do that because I don't have permission. All right, so we are going to jump around. Now, basically, the Halloween drama is pretty much done, but we're, we're not completely done with Halloween. I'm going to take you back... If I can find it and do the right one. I think this is going to take you to questions and answers. I apologize if it does. No, that's not the one I want either, though. This is the one I wanted. Full screen. We got to do something. I got to do something. Oh, no, that's not the one I want. Darn. How can I... Well, I guess that one was... No, that one won't do either. I'm trying to find, you know what? I bet I deleted it. I was going to show you something. Oh, I know where I can do it. We're going to jump off show, sort of, 
we're going to go to my Dragon Deals Live so I can give you guys a full screen. We've got to do something Halloween-y, so... All right, now the reason I pulled that out, then we're going to get back out of here. Let's see. The reason I pulled that out, that is a product that people buy and put on their front door, right? You push the button, it's the doorbell, the kids go, ooh, so cool. And you sell them and you get them as returns. This is another product you have to be very careful about selling. Most of these come in a vacuum pack. You know, the press pack. I forget what those are called. But the solid plastic that you really have to take a knife or use the perforations to get it out. Only carry that type. Otherwise, you are going to get all of these ones that I call loose. This came in like a little bag. Uh, and it was from Walmart, I believe came in a little bag, loose ones. You can put them back in the bag. Every single one of these I sold, and I only sold eight, every single one of these I sold works perfect, not a thing wrong with it. Every single one came back. Not one of them had a defect. This came back two and a half years ago. It still even says all of the different phrases it has. I'm telling you, this is actually a very good product. But because it wasn't in that little pressure vacuum thing, that if they open it, they can't reseal it, all eight back at my cost. Huge loss. These cost me $6 myself a piece. They were 12 I think, at the store. And I paid half. So, I'm telling you, you need to pay attention to what's going to come back to you. I have to mention that because it ruined that that year's Halloween. Just those eight products with full refunds, with shipping priority, because that's how I mailed them both ways, ruined my profit for that one, that one, what I call section of time. I divide what is generating me money into a section of time. Normally, it's less than a quarter. It's normally two months, every two months is my sections of time that I do. I don't use normal business practices entirely. So uh, you would compare that. You would have lost money for a half of your quarter is what you would say, or a third of your quarter. Uh, so, uh, or three quarters of your quarter, whatever it happened to be. So uh, because I didn't buy the right ones, I lost money. Now, the re another reason I mention it this exact same product came also from another brand in the pressure plastic, but it was a dollar more. If I would have paid the dollar more, I would have turned a nifty hundred dollar profit on eight of the total total profit on eight instead of a loss of almost that amount. So you need to pay attention to how the consumer is going to deal with what you send them in Halloween or any other holiday season. All righty, guys. Well, I really didn't get too many questions. We are going to jump over to that section one more time, if I can remember which one it is. Nope, that's not that one. It's this one. We're going to sit over here and question and answers for just a second. If anyone has any questions about what we've discussed so far, about the page, the reason I didn't go too deep into the the uh, recipes and stuff is the person that I thought was going to come in here and share recipes didn't do it. But you can, and that's not Lindy either, that's another person. But you can get an inordinate amount of Halloween recipes from her site on that page. Uh, that I showed you, and you can get all the costumes you need at keywebco.com, and these are theater-level costumes. I do have some of the cheapier, cheapier, which is not the right word, but cheaper ones in there, but none of the low-grade vinyl fall-apart made with fishing line. 
Again, one of the quickest way to tell the quality of a costume is the materials, the packaging, and how it is sewn together. If you see clear thread, you know, like fishing line thread, I would definitely be very wary. All right, guys. Well, I don't see any questions. I hope you enjoyed listening to me rattle on and on and on a little bit about Halloween. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and I think go ahead and sign off for tonight. Again, this will be on Ecom Tips Podcast where you can listen to uh, the show. Of course, you didn't get the great graphics, so it's not going to be quite as good in the podcast as it is in the live show. I hope you enjoyed listening to me rattle on and on and on a little bit about Halloween. I am going to tell you guys, please be safe. Make sure you watch those kids. People get drunk and drive around. They don't pay attention that there's little babies running across the street. You don't want one of your babies or you don't want to be that one drunk driving around killing babies. So do mind your P's and Q's on Halloween. I hope you enjoyed listening to me rattle on and on and on. My name is Roger Karsling of KeyWebCo.com and I will see everyone on Thursday at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time where we're going to go and we're still going to have the Halloween kind of backgrounds and themes. I'll trim it out a little bit. So there's going to be a Halloween theme all the way until we get to Halloween. Halloween night, Halloween night on the 31st. I am really going to pull out the bells and whistles. I'm going to add more graphics, not just full backgrounds, but actual small graphic images that you probably have seen some of them floating around Facebook today. I have like a little vampire thing with the ghosts appearing. Be safe. Have a wonderful Halloween. Again, I want to thank Perfect Finds for you for coming in and moderating tonight. Uh, We did have quite a few people in, but not too many questions. My foreign networks are packed with people, but they can't leave comments. But I do want to say there is a lot of conversation going on in the UK right now. Uh, No, 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 no. That's not the UK. That is Russia. I always have a lot of comments going on in Russia. Hopefully it's good stuff about my show, but we'll go get that translated afterwards. I have so far, I have a pretty good audience over there. Now, obviously, I'm not targeting global markets like I used to because Key Web Co., everything comes from the U.S. No one in their right mind in the world is going to buy anything from the United States if they have to pay for shipping. It's ridiculous. When they can order it from China for half price and get it in two weeks, or they can order it from me and get it in a week and pay three times as much. I don't think so. So I'm telling you, my global market, now that I'm only using USA Fulfilling, is kind of going down the crapper. But U.S. sales and views are through the roof. And actually, the product lines that I carry are very high end, and I need the high end market. So the U.K. will be pretty good, Canada, Australia, and the United States. I may have some sales in China because I am carrying a few things. Not everything comes from there. Uh, I am carrying a few things that they would be rather interested in there that are rather difficult to get in Asia. So, yeah, I might have a few little global sales going on, but basically I've gone back to a USA market. Just for your information, keywebco.com. I guess I'll go ahead and spill the beans a little bit early and then we're going to sign off. November 5th is my birthday. Every year on my birthday, I make a major announcement about things that I'm doing. I did mention Prairie Grit earlier today. That's not the major announcement for my birthday, even though I am going to make that into part of my major announcement. But I am going to be exporting to Prairie Grit, and the price is going to be the same as on my website. Uh, That is difficult to do. Normally, when you are selling on a platform, you have to increase the prices because the overhead costs of the platform. I was able to work out a good enough deal and my margins are so small anyway, I'm not really looking for profits. If I was looking for profits, I probably couldn't do it. But since I'm not, and I'm giving you guys the best price I can get, that is being translated over into my business on Prairie Grit. I don't care if you buy my items on Prairie Grit, which are not there yet, but they will be very soon or you buy them from keywebco.com, I make the exact same amount of money. So that's just an FYI. Um, You can save 5%. The only difference is, no matter what you buy at keywebco.com, there's a pop-up that comes up when you're ready to leave my site. If you remember the code on the pop-up, you can save 5%. You just enter it when you check out. So that's the only way that it's cheaper to buy it from my website as opposed to the platform. But you would have to know it and take the time to put the code in and all that. Otherwise, everything is identical. 
That's just an FYI. I thought you guys might be interested in knowing. All right. Well, I guess we are ready for the final credits. I hope you enjoyed the show tonight and I will see you next week. I will see you on Thursday and I will see you every day on Facebook Live, which then goes to YouTube as an upload and Ecom Tips podcast. Have a wonderful night and a great Halloween.